All right. Welcome, everyone. Hello, hello. Welcome to today's podcast. I'm Aldrema Harper, the host of the Organizedpreneur podcast and creator of the Declutter with Dream five-day challenge where I help female entrepreneurs to fulfill their dream of clarity, hope, peace, and sustainability in life and business. And today I'm super, super excited because I have one of my favorite peeps here from Louisiana (laughs) that's going to be joining me today on today's show, uh, where we're going to be talking a little bit about organization. We're going to be talking a little bit about business. We're just going to chop it up here and just have a really, really good time. So today I'm interviewing an amazing emerging entrepreneur and uh, her name is Stacy and uh, Stacy Weaver. Let me just give you the, the whole name, okay? So Stacy Weaver is a New Orleans native, a wife and homeschooling mom. She has two sons, 14 and 20. I still can't believe that she has a 20 year old, <laughs> but okay. And she says, after 13 years of experience as an executive assistant, she says she is now ready. Now She is now a new entrepreneur and has started her own virtual assistant company called SW, uh, SRW. I'm going to get it right here in just a minute. SRW Freelance Virtual Support Business, where she provides high-level administrative uh, services to executives and entrepreneurs. On her own time, she's either helping her parents make beaded bracelets. Cool. And uh, rearranging spaces, nice. And binge watching old TV shows. Now, I I gotta know what old TV shows are you talking about, Stacy? <laughs> now, lately, I have been stuck on the Mary Tyler Moore show. What? <laughs> yes, I love this show. I gotta watch it every night before I go to sleep. Wow, wow! I used to love that show. It was always uh, so, I think it was just like inspiring, you know, uh, uh, for me, not, not to mention funny, right? It was, right. You know, it's, and I don't know why I say it was, it still is because, you know, there are reruns yeah. out there, but I, I mean, I used to love that show and I love the music. And then when she twirls around uh, uh-huh, and, and the throws end. her head up, oh my gosh, yeah. I used to love that. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. I did can't you, believe did you, it. Older lady looking at her when she throw that head up. Yes. <laughs> I always laugh at that part. Oh my goodness, that is so funny, so funny. Yeah. So, Stacy, welcome to the podcast. I'm so excited that you're on the show today, um, and I've really been looking forward to you uh, coming and talking about your business and us just kind of chatting it up and and all that stuff. I've really been looking forward to it. So. I'm I'm glad I'm I, I'm even more excited that you launched your business because I love yeah. entrepreneurship I love business and as you know I love talking about business. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a little bit more about your business and I want to hear more about um, you know making beaded bracelets and things like that. So you know so tell yeah. tell the listeners more about that your business and and some of the stuff that you're working on and all that yes so like you said after 13 years i was an executive assistant in corporate america i kind of uh fell into that job because i actually went to um school for a little bit to be a medical office specialist and so i couldn't find anything in that field so i got with a temp agency and they actually signed me up for a job being a receptionist and then I, I stayed there and um elevated into administrative assistant and then executive assistant so i kind of just fell into into that part of it and so i was doing that for 13 years but then in 2020 i decided to leave the um uh executive assistant job to homeschool my son and to be mm-hmm. there more for my family And so that's what I decided to do in 2020. And so during that time I was out, I got a lot of phone calls from colleagues and old employers looking for my services. And so one of my old employers said, you might want to think about, you know, opening up or doing your own thing as a virtual assistant. 
And so I thought about it, thought about it, prayed on it, and I decided to go ahead with it. And so, and this year, actually, the beginning of this year, I launched, you know, my business, SRW Freelance Virtual Support, where I'm a virtual assistant to executives. Yes. Oh, I so love that. And so when yeah. I was saying S S R V, uh, that that's your initials, right? S R W. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, why do I keep saying S R V? I don't know. <laughs> I think I was thinking about. Isn't there a group or something that's S R V? Oh no, LJ. Okay, I'm just messing everything. Oh my goodness. That's yeah, okay. so that's that's okay. that's, that's yeah. my S R W. That's my S R W. S R W. Stacy Renee love that. Weaver. Stacy Renee Weaver. So yes, yes, yes. I'm so excited about that because it what it tells me is that you know when you look at the experiences that you brought to other businesses, right? Because yeah. that's what you were doing. You were getting paid for your experience and your expertise. And you brought that to the marketplace in terms of working for, you know, someone else. And so yeah. you brought those experiences into the marketplace for yourself and launching your business. How does it feel? It feels crazy to be honest, because <laughs> I never thought I would be an entrepreneur. I always say, and I don't know why I had this mindset, but I always said, like, that's not for me. I'm not that type of person. I'm not a, I'm not a business savvy person. So I always just thought that that would, wouldn't be my path. And oh. I, I don't know why. I just thought that. I thought I would be an employee. You know, I was yeah. more employee. I wasn't good at business, numbers, stuff like that. So I just always had that mindset for some odd reason. But I'm out of that mindset now. Right. Yeah. Cause you, cause you have to do it pretty quickly. Right. Yes, yes. But it, it feels think, crazy, but it also feels rewarding and liberating. I feel yeah. free, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's, I that's feel. what I was going to say. You know, what are, you know, aside from the uh, changes in your mindset, there, there are so many benefits and so many positives to being your own boss. Yes. Right. What, what do you what do you find that's most challenging though? What do you think is most challenging about it? For me, I think coming into this, I have to really, and I think we talked about it, my time management. That's the most challenging thing for me is my time management because I'm trying to do all these things, homeschool my son, work, right. be there for my parents, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And so I just gotta juggle that better. Yeah, yeah. That, that's the most you know, challenging thing for me. Yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, particularly coming out of, because I, you know, and I know I've mentioned that to you before, um, coming out of being an employee, it does require mm -hmm. um, that you manage your time even more because when you're an employee, they're pretty much managing your time for you. Right. You know? You're there yep. and you're not nine, nine to five or whatever you're, you know, eight hours or what have you. And you have, you know, mm -hmm. things that you're doing, you know, for them and you know what your deadlines are and things like that. But then when you enter into that entrepreneurial space, it's like, oh, OK, nobody's really like, you know, riding me about anything. Right. Nobody's really, you know, asking me, you know, to do this and do that. And it got it has yep. to be done by five o'clock or whatever. And yep. that can that can be a plus or a minus, right? Because sometimes you think when you're when you're an entrepreneur, it kind of you you have that freedom, and then you don't realize you're like, oh my goodness, I got to get this, you know, done. How am I going to get all this done, you know, when I still only have the same amount of time, right? We only have twenty four right. hours. <laughs> yep. So you know, and you got to be then, more disciplined too. Yeah, for yourself. Yeah. Cause you're, yeah. you're like the, the gatekeeper. You're the, you gotta take initiative. You gotta do, do the things that nobody is making you do. You gotta, right. you know, be your own boss. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. So it's, it's rewarding. And then it can be a challenge, you know, yeah. uh, all the same and different people have, you know, different things that they have to adjust to when they, you know, become an entrepreneur. I think for me, when I first, now, and I'll say, like, for me, I always 
had this vision of being my own boss, but I didn't know what it looked like. So yeah. when I was a little girl, I used to always carry a briefcase uh -huh. because, <laughs> because to me, that is what a business person <laughs> did, right? Right. So sometimes I had stuff in it, you know, sometimes I didn't, but all the way uh, through, you know, as far as I could remember, I always had a briefcase, right? And I still yeah. love briefcases, even to this day. They just look different, right? Yeah. But uh, I used to, I used to love uh, briefcases and pins, and you know. And then I would just, you know, pretend I was, you know, my own boss and everything. And yeah. but I, I didn't know what it looked like because I really didn't have an example of of what mm -hmm. that looked like. But I do remember my first entrepreneurial experience, and that was. Uh, in Raceland, uh, one of the things that I did was I used to sell popcorn balls, right? You, okay. Do you remember? Pop, did, did you do that? Did you guys no. you know, have pop, popcorn balls or anything I like that? I think like elementary school for different yeah. occasions, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, and what I would do, I would put a sign in the window and uh, like before school, I put a sign in the window and, uh -huh. you know, I would say open, you know, snacks available, you know, before school or something like that. What? And then How so old I, were did, you? I, I was in junior high. I was in okay, junior okay. high. Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, and so my mother showed me how to make popcorn balls. And so mm -hmm. um, and so I popcorn balls and then, you know, we would buy little snacks and stuff like that from the store. And then I would just, you know, resell them, stuff like that. And so it was so. Um, it was really my first experience of being my own boss. So I did yeah. that in the morning and then after school, I would reopen, put the sign back in the window and the kids would stop by, you know, get uh, popcorn balls. I also did like little, um, they were called uh, ice icebergs or something like that, where you yep. have Kool-Aid in the Rose cup. Up. Yeah. And so, uh, and so I sold those. So, you know, and I, I liked, you know, you know, having my own money and things like that. Yeah. So that was my first experience, you know, as far as, um, uh, uh, you know, an entrepreneur and having my own business. And I was like, I think that was when I first got the bug, you know, yeah, that's and, awesome. uh, that and that was my first experience with actually the exchange, you know, of money and, yeah. you know, products and things like that. And, uh, and, you know, I still, you know, carry my little briefcase and everything, you know, so, <laughs> but, but that was my first experience. And so, that is awesome. uh, yeah, yeah. I never and, had uh, any of those type of dreams. <laughs> <laughs> all of and that even, scared me, Eldrima. All of that scared me. Dealing with wow. money, all of that. And I don't yeah. know, I, I, I wasn't good at math. That was that was one thing. Mm -hmm. So I just tried to stay away from that arena. Yeah, yeah. And 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 even I mean I'm glad I'm glad you said that. Now one of the I think I did excel at math. Mm -hmm. But the but the funny thing is <laughs> like my first job right after high school was in mm -hmm. a grocery store. Okay. And they fired me after two weeks because my drawer always came up either over or under. So what? I was not good at counting money. <laughs> and so two weeks, they were like, um, we're going to have to let you go. And I was like, oh, yeah. okay. So, but yeah, it's just, you know, it's just interesting how all those experiences, you know, just kind of play into, you know, what, what, uh, uh, you know, uh, you, the things that you experience and, yeah. And the things that kind of contribute to where you are today, right? Yeah. So, uh, and even when I was working for corporate America, I always would sit, you know, e because I was an executive assistant always, uh, also, and I would always mm -hmm. sit in the in at my desk and think about what my business would look like. I still didn't yeah. have the experience, still didn't yeah. have, you know, somebody that I could look at that you know could teach me what that's like or anything yeah but I still had dreams of it so it was yeah. it was always there so anyway so I I, I I digress but so tell me who are some of the the, the the type of clients that you serve in your business 
Yeah, so I have two clients as of right now, and I have, uh, um, so I have two clients, uh, an entrepreneur and an executive, a CEO of an um, organization. And so, um, yeah, those are my two clients, a truck driver and a, and a CEO. So they're kind of on different sides of the spectrum, but yeah. that's kind of that, me That's too, really you know? good. But that's really good, though, because it's giving you two different types of experiences. It definitely is. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely is. One needs definitely. more more help in the bookkeeping, you know, organization area. And then one needs more help with like calendar, you know, travel, board meeting type stuff. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. And you launched your business, you know, you got clients pretty quick after you launched your business. I did. So wh what, 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 what did that feel like when you got your first client? You were like, what? Like, wow. So my first client is the one that suggested, well, no, actually two people suggested I be a virtual assistant, but my mm -hmm. first, my first client was one of the people. And so he was pretty much like, once you started, we, we, we gonna go. So get your stuff together because I'm looking <laughs> at you. So I already had a client before I had a business. God. So that's the amazing part for my journey, you know, and yeah. and then so I I really got excited when those contracts got signed. That's when I was like, OK, let's go. You know, yeah, <laughs> this is real. So, yeah, I felt I felt amazing. And, and ironically, they both got signed on the same day. Both of my clients signed their contracts on the same day. Wow. So I was having a good day that day. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think I remember seeing uh, your post on Facebook or something and, you know, about contracts or something like that. And I was like, wow, yeah. that is just really, really cool. So what happened after after they signed the contracts? What what you know, what happened then? It was like, let's do it. Yeah, I went off yeah. to the races, especially with yeah. the first line. <laughs> I'm still running. <laughs> But yeah, I went to work immediately for both of them, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, that's good. That is really good. And yeah. you know why this is so encouraging? Because really, for those who are listening or watching, you know, uh, this show, I hope that this is an encouragement, you know, to them, to any of you who's looking to launch a business, you know, just just know that. You know, you don't have to have it all together. Because even when I launched my business, I didn't have it all together. Right. Know? And I still can't say that I have it all together. I've learned some things along the way. But, yeah. you know, hopefully this encourages people, you know, to let them know that, you know, you don't have to have it all together. You don't have to have all of your, you know, ducks in a row. And it, it, right. it, it won't be perfect. You're going to be scared. Were you scared? Yep. I'm, I'm still <laughs> scared. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, yeah, I was really nervous because like I told you, I didn't even have, that wasn't a thought of mine. It, so that's not mm. like I was, oh, I, I've been dreaming of this since I was 12. No. Yeah. <laughs> I I didn't think that this was a possibility for me. So I was really nervous, wow, but I wow. had to believe in myself and know, why not you, Stacy? Why not you? You deserve that's... to have your own business. Why not? Yeah. You don't have to oh, be working for that. people for the rest of your life. And I was teaching my sons. Whatever y'all do, try not to work for anybody. So I had to practice mm -hmm. what I was preaching to them, too. So, Wow, that is so important, too. You know, when you're an entrepreneur and you have two sons and teaching them how to work for themselves and, and, and you know, be business owners and things like that. Yeah. What a great legacy, you know, that is, yeah. you know, to leave to your sons. How do they feel yeah. about you working, you know? as your own boss and everything do they have any comments yeah. or anything or what are they saying i th i think they're pretty proud of me you yeah. know they haven't said it but i can tell yeah. that they they're kind of proud that i've taken a chance on myself and i'm doing yeah. it you know yeah yeah what about support from your family and everything How, how's how's that how is that coming because sometimes you know people will Say, you know, I don't have support, you know, from my family, you know, yeah. or things like that. So how's that going for you? Yeah, um, I bet my family is pretty supportive of me, yeah. especially my mom. You know, she's, yeah. she's really proud of me. 
Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That is yeah. that is my really family, good. My family's pretty pretty supportive of what I'm doing. Yeah. And being that you are just launching, you know, your business and everything, what would you say to someone, you know, that's considering launching their business? What would you say to them? I would say do it. But first, consult with your creator. Make sure mm-hmm. you're on path to what it is you're supposed to be doing. Make sure you're in alignment with what it mm-hmm. is, you know, you're supposed to be doing. But then mm-hmm. do it because we, we pray for stuff. We ask for stuff. And then we don't put our feet to, you know, to work. Yeah. And so I think yeah. you want to do it, pray about it, and then do it. Mm-hmm. However yeah. you need to get it done, get to work, research, ask people questions look up stuff, you know, whatever mm-hmm. you got to do. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I love that. I love yeah. that. Be- believe in yourself and then do, do the work. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's really hard out there sometimes too, when you think about, you know, the, the, the belief system that you have to have. And we were just kind of yes. talking about that a little bit, you know, that's, it's hard because it, you feel like there's so many forces against you, you know, yeah. Uh, and and then there's what you know, you see this all the time, you know, imposter imposter syndrome, you know, yeah. is what they call it, you know, other people out there and you're like, oh, man, you know, I would like to, you know, for my business to do, you know, whatever it is. And so yeah. you got to stay away from all of those uh, things that's going to impact you negatively, you know. Yes. And so, yeah, so I just I love this. I love what you're saying. So. Um, so what are some of the things that you actually do for your clients? Sure. So, um, like I said, I work with a, a truck driver and an executive. So mm-hmm. with the, well, with both of them, I kind of schedule their meetings. Mm-hmm. I'm scheduling meetings. I'm booking travel, organizing emails, um, managing board meetings. Um, I'm acting as a liaison between them and constituents or staff members. So yeah, and then Got and it. then also with the truck driver, I'm also um helping him find a bookkeeper, and I'm kind of helping him be in line with stuff like that. Yeah, wow, that is wow, that is that is very cool because um you never you never know some of the some of the needs that they may have, you know, that your clients yeah. may have until until sometimes they don't even know what they need. Right. <laughs> yep. That's true. <laughs> Wow. Yep. Yeah. So Stacy, so you recently, well, not just recently, but you've gone through my five day challenge. Yep. And so uh you've gone through several of them, right? Mm-hmm. And so what was your experience uh in going through the five day challenge? What what well let me ask it this way. What was it that um What was it? What was the reason that you felt like you needed to go through the five day decluttering challenge? Because I know that you're pretty organized. Yeah. So what was the? Yeah. yeah. So like you say, organizing is my jam. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's something that I I like to rearrange my spaces a lot. I'm always rearranging my room, bedroom, kitchen, front room, everywhere. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's kind of something. I enjoy doing. So I was just looking on Eventbrite because I'm also in this phase of learning. I I just Mm want to learn stuff and, you know, learn Mm -hmm. from people. So I was looking on Eventbrite for some stuff to just learn and get into. And I saw your declutter page. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, let's see what this Mm -hmm. talk about because it's kind of up my alley. And then you were a black woman, which is also Mm -hmm. up my alley. And so (laughs) I said, let me check her out. And so Mm -hmm. I signed up for your challenge. And I must say, you know how you sign up for stuff and you don't really know what you're getting into? You're like, oh, I done messed up. Let me get out of this. <laughs> no, I, I thoroughly enjoy your challenges. I enjoy being a part of the Facebook group. I enjoy talking to you and just knowing you. Because yeah, this, the, each challenge I walk away, I feel lighter. I feel like I'm more organized and I'm able to take on my next my next task because I'm clear in thought. I have clarity now. It's just it's mm-hmm. it's weird that how much if you clean up around you, declutter your space, 
your space looks bigger and you yeah. just have more room for thought. Yeah. Oddly enough. So it, yeah. it, and it helped me with launching my business because I, I feel I'm able to think better, clearer and make better decisions. And it's, it's yeah. weird from decluttering, but that's actually what it does. For me. <laughs> yeah. And I so appreciate that because I don't think people realize you know, that just the simple act of decluttering brings about so much clarity, so yes. much openness, like you said, you know, and it allows you uh, the capacity to do things where before it's like, you know, you were probably, you know, wondering why, you know, there might have been like the, the chaos sometimes. And I'm not saying you because yes. you, I know you are organized. But the decluttering process all by itself, it just really opens up the pipeline. Like, it does. you know, where you can think so much better. Like mm -hmm. those thoughts may not have come to you had you not been, you know, going through the challenge and, and decluttering. And that's why there's so much emphasis on decluttering, you know. Mm -hmm. And so because of those benefits, and I think, you know, people, some people, uh, that, that I've talked to, it's like, they just want to get to the organizing part. I just want to get yeah. organized, you know, yeah. but miss it's the how process. important. Yeah. Yeah. They miss how important it is to declutter so that you are organizing the stuff that's left. Right. You know? <laughs> and a lot of the stuff we have is stuff we don't need. Get oh rid of gosh. it. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Get oh rid of gosh. it. We have to get rid of it. And that's like I told you before, your class has taught me that before I was just straightening up. I wasn't getting rid of nothing. I was just maneuvering it, making it look pretty, dusting it off. Yeah. But I wasn't getting rid of <laughs> anything. And, and you so, know, yeah, I, I learned that through your, your challenges. Yeah. And, and it's so, it's so funny because, you know, I always share, as you know, I share the fact that I'm a recovering, uh, organized pack rat. Pack rat. Yeah, yeah. You know, because that's exactly what I did. Everything was organized, but I was just organizing all the stuff that I had, not getting rid of anything, not decluttering anything. And yeah. so it's just, I, I, I did not realize the importance of that. And once I did, it was like, what a difference it made for me, you know? Mm -hmm. And so that's why I wanted to start, you know, with those challenges, with the monthly challenges. And because I know I'm not the only one, <laughs> you yeah. know, that's, go right. that's going through that, you know? So, yeah, so I, I definitely, you know, uh, appreciate that. So, and I know you probably have already, you know, talked, mentioned it already, but what was your biggest takeaway from the challenge my biggest takeaway let's see here <laughs> um well I, I remember you saying I, I, I'll say this I remember one time you said and this is one of the challenges you said that um the the your aha moment was mm -hmm. organizing what was organizing for the stuff versus the space the and space. not organizing. Yeah. And I, yeah. I've even gotten it wrong now, but, <laughs> <laughs> but that was one. I remember you saying organize that, that, for that the was space a big, and uh -huh. not the stuff. Yeah. That's and one of the, the things. Yeah. yeah. But that's one yeah. of the things on my list that was one of my biggest takeaway, but the biggest one for me that I, and I, I thought of this during the last challenge is it's like self care. I have to look at it like it's self-care. So when you declutter your space around you, it's kind of like doing a facial or painting your fingernails or getting a massage. It's like you got to look at it like that because actually at the end of it, you're going to feel better. Yeah. You know, you, you're going to yeah. feel better. It's, it's a little yeah. aggravating to do because you don't let everything pile up and stuff everywhere. <laughs> but once you fix it, <laughs> declutter, get rid of it, Get your space nice. You're gonna feel like, ah, like you know, like yeah. you just did something to yourself. You know, to take yeah. care of yourself, and it kind of is. You're taking care of yourself, yourself. Because I also learned that what's going on around you, well, what's going on in you, 
is a a a, a replica a replica of what's going on around yes. you. So yes. if you're feeling yes. bad internally, it's gonna play out in your outer world. So that's right. That's exactly yeah. so right. Like, and, those, and those are three things I took away. Yeah. From, <laughs> yeah. From and I channel. I so yeah. And I so so appreciate that. I I I think when when the when you mentioned that you had started your business in the group, that mm-hmm. was the thing for me. I was like, you know, that's it. Mm-hmm. Because for me, I, I love working with entrepreneurs. I love working with female entrepreneurs. And I guess what I, the thing that I did not realize was that in addition to what you're saying, you know, about self-care was that mm-hmm. it gives you the clarity so that you can launch your business. And that's a huge benefit. You can either launch yes. your business or relaunch your business, you know, whatever right. it is, because you get that much clarity. And that's a huge mm-hmm. benefit. And the fact that, you know, people sometimes may not put, you know, a, a cost associated with clutter. But when you don't have the clarity to relaunch or launch a business, or when you don't have the clarity to, to focus on the ideas that you may have to put mm-hmm. in place for a business, that is literally costing you millions, yeah, millions of dollars. And I'm not saying right away, but in right. the long run, Over time. right? Because at the end of the day, had you not gotten that clarity, mm-hmm. had you not gotten the, 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 the mind capacity or the brain capacity, you know, to think through some things that you wanted to do in your business, or reach mm-hmm. out to people, or whatever that is. Right. In the long run, it cost it costs you millions of dollars because you know over over years and years, it may take that that amount of time for you to make that money. Right. But hopefully not. You know. Yeah. It depends on your um you know your ability to put things in place, and once you right. get clarity about things, you know you gotta you gotta do it. Like get the ground running. You gotta do it. Yeah. You know, so yeah, so that was the thing for me that I was like, oh my goodness, this is, this is what I'm talking about right here. Yeah. You know, so. And it was all like perfect timing because I, I didn't, I didn't plan to meet you. I didn't oh. plan to do this VA business. It was just, but everything, once I started doing one thing, something else made sense and something else presented itself. It's, it's kind of crazy, but. That's actually what happened for me. That is, yeah. I had I had to get clear on my what's going on around here and internally too. Like, why not yeah. me, Stacy? Why not? Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness, I I so love your testimony. I mean, it's just it's just so so powerful. So what I'll be doing is I'll definitely be putting your contact information. Um, okay. It'll either be below the video, next to the video, or what have you, but it'll be included in the podcast. But what is the best way you want people to reach you? Um, they could email me. Or okay. if they're on social right. media, they can send okay. me a DM. Okay. And we'll definitely yeah. have those. But emailing links. me is better. Is it okay? Email that yeah, that's what I was wondering because some different people have different ways they want to be contacted, you know. So right. yeah. So definitely, um, uh, I am just uh, I, I'm just over the moon excited about the progress that you are making and the things that you're accomplishing. And I'm I'm glad to be a part of this journey with you. You definitely are a staple <laughs> in it. I'm not going to lie. You definitely are. So uh, so I definitely appreciate all that you have said. And um, uh, so to the listeners, make sure that you reach out to Stacy. S R W F V S at gmail.com is my email. S R W F for Frank, V for Victory, S for Stacy, S dot com. Oh, at, at gmail.com. I'm sorry. That's right. <laughs> I probably I probably messed you up. <laughs> no, you didn't. 
Well, Stacy, thank you so much for joining me. I so appreciate this thank time, you for and uh, this hopefully, dream. yeah, I uh, hopefully we'll you know be able to come back and look at the progress that you've made and the millions yep. that you've made in your business. Yep. And, and Let's all talk that about stuff. it. So, yep. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So I, I'm just super Put excited. It out there. Thank you for, I know you have a lot of stuff on your plate, but I do appreciate you joining me, you know, on the podcast today. And um, to the listeners, make sure you reach out to Stacy about uh, VA support. And um, and I know that we didn't get a chance to talk about your, your uh, making beaded bracelets. That's well, yeah, something you do with your bracelet. mom, right? No, I actually do that with my husband. Well, he kind of like left me a little bit with that. Okay. So okay, he left it all to you. Mostly me doing it now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so, so is that, that like your hobby? Called, yeah, I was doing it to help him at first, and then it's kind of like we just do it for fun, or when somebody asks yeah. for something. Yeah. But yeah, we do we do beat it bracelets. Okay. And the okay. um that company's called Royal Rocks. Oh, oh, Royal Rocks. I love it. I love yeah. it. So we're going to have all of that information in terms of how people can contact you, um, you know, for the bracelets, for your virtual uh, administra- executive support uh, services. Uh, make sure you reach out to her. And also make sure that if you're interested in joining the Decluttering Challenge, make sure you go to declutterwithdream.com. Uh, if you want to reach the kind of clarity that Stacy is talking about so that you can either relaunch your business or just launch your business, uh, and, or if it's a part of your self-care, like she was saying, then yep. you want to definitely go to declutterwithdream.com. Thank you all for joining us today. I'm super excited um, that uh, we've had this time, you know, to talk about, you know, organizing, decluttering, uh, virtual assistant services, all of that. Hopefully you'll join in uh, the next time. See you later, everybody. See (laughs) y'all.